Now entering the Bitcoin Podcast Network. Welcome back to another episode of the Bitcoin Podcast Network's On Rampin'. Nope, that's not the right show. Just the headers. Sorry, I was in jazz jazz voice mode. I thought I was doing a different show. I haven't done that show in a while. so Sorry about that, Jesse. I apologize. We can redo it. No, no, no. We're just going to roll with it. People, Mistakes happen. And, you know, from failures come great successes like a fucking phoenix. So um, let's tell people what this show's about. Jesse, give it a whip. Give it a whirl. This is about uh, our aggregation of all the crypto headlines. And we talk about any uh, new policies that are being made in different countries around the world or um, about people who are getting arrested and um, fined for lots of money. <laughs> that's pretty much what it's about no kidding um jesse just kind of like gave you a 2018 summary so if you missed this show all of 2018 shame on you and your family but um it's about the headlines that happened in crypto uh because a lot of things happened in crypto and i was beginning to feel overwhelmed you know you get that sweaty feeling jesse like mm-hmm behind your knees sweaty and you're like oh god is it that hot out here it's not oh i must be anxious and so i was getting that feeling about crypto like i was missing out on things so then we started collecting the news and then we were like man some of this news is great we just want to talk about it so that's what we do so that's just the headers get it just the headers i like your explanation much better than mine (laughs) well i mean you were really absolute you were matter of fact like this mm-hmm. is what the news usually is, and it's what we've been talking about. That's true. For the last, I, was, <laughs> I like to hit them with a, you know, high bird's eye view, like the original Grand Theft Auto on PC. You know what I mean? Mm. Wow, that was such a bad game. It was terrible, but they really turned it around, just like the Patriots. The <laughs> Patriots were terrible. When I was a kid, the Patriots were the worst team in football. It was like comical. They looked like a middle school team, and now. Probably greatest football franchise that's ever existed. It's phenomenal. Phenomenal. Yep. Fucking. All right. Phenomenal. Yeah. Let's 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 jump right in. So we're gonna jump right into this shit. So the first article coming from last weekend. This is written by Adrian Zemidzinski. That is an alias. I'm 100 percent certain of it. Oh, 98 percent. Nvidia faces. Cl- oh, sorry. Nine. Wow, 99,977 total views. That is quite a bit. Um, So this article got some reach. NVIDIA faces class action lawsuit over losses after diminished mining GPU demand. Whoa. This could be. Whoa. See, this is juicy, dude. There's a lot of juicy articles this week. Yeah, it's like 2019 is going to start off with a bang. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, Graphics processing unit producer NVIDIA is facing a class action lawsuit over the losses reportedly by the company when lower crypto prices diminished demand for gpus by miners shaw law firm announced this lawsuit december 24th damn what a way to end the year hey by the way merry christmas you sued the complaint states that the company made false and misleading statements to the market Namely, according to the announcement, NVIDIA touted its ability to monitor the cryptocurrency market and make rapid changes to its business as necessary. Shaw states that the GPU producer also declared any drop off in demand for its GPUs amongst cryptocurrency miners would not negatively impact the company's business because of a strong demand for GPUs from the gaming market. Oh, but were they wrong? As Cointelegraph recently reported after the cryptocurrency mining crash, NVIDIA was the worst reported performer in the S&P 500. Ouch. That shouldn't laugh at that. People lost money. After a massive sell-off of its shares, the stock price of the company fell by 54%. Ouch. In mid-November, that is November de medio, 
<laughs> an analysis by Saskatchewan, a United States U- uh, based global trading and technology firm, observed that mining Ethereum using graphics processing units was no longer profitable. In the Saskatchewan analysis, the profit per month of GPU Ethereum miners hit $0 by November 1st, down nearly $150 in 2017. Hmm. Wow, can you imagine that? Like at one point in 2017, if you spent one dollar, you were making 150 on on the processors. That's how juicy it was. So we're gonna move on from this article. I don't know if that's. I don't think that's correct. I think it's 150 dollars a month. That's per month or like a oh, for a profit per month. Line literally GPU. just said that. I thought it meant profit like no by margin okay my bad people i thought i meant profit by margin let's just ignore i said that ignore it 150 dollars a month is not that much so um but anyways you know why this doesn't excite me jesse like warm in the pants exciting Mm -hmm. why because this is called difficulty and this is what happens with proof of work algorithms when they're not profitable, people lose a lot of money. They stop mining for a while, and then the difficulty goes down, and then people start making money again. But by that time, technology is a little better, so like new people enter the game. New people with different miners, maybe better miners, maybe just a bunch of the old miners people weren't using and turned off, they get in the game. Hence the decentralized nature of the proof-of-work algorithm is because it's it's supposed to be that constant sinusoidal movement of people with skin in the game and not with skin in the game Mm. you know so what do you think man are you like at all by this at all i'm thinking about like bitcoin specific a6 and the fact that like they're talking about ethereum specifically and how ethereum is not profitable anymore with gpu mining but Like there, like I think the, the the latest GPU from Nvidia is it um, fourteen nanometers or is it twelve or is it like what is it at right now? Because GPUs, yeah, the mining GPUs, yeah. Well, for, no, no. Well, GPUs like general purpose, right? That's what it is. What like for? Am I, checking? I don't know what you're thinking. No, I'm checking. You said something about nanometers. Just the yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, how how much better are the GPUs going to be because we can't make them any smaller anyway. There's going to be a point where like physical hardware limitations are going to inhibit people from creating um, faster miners, specifically GPU uh, miners. Moore's Law. Yeah, Moore's Law is not going to work. It doesn't... It's it's, not going to work. It's not going to work anymore because you can't get sub seven nanometers, right? I I do not know. So, I don't know. It's coming up soon. So, yeah, it's but be a problem. Seven nanometers are what the ASICs are at right now. Um, not for Ethereum. That's just I'm, we're talking about GPUs. Oh, GPUs, are, I think are are twelve at the lowest. I'm not um, sure. How do you even do call they, that smallest? GPU, what are they cores? They're not cores. I think it's the uh, the fan length between the transistors and the in the GPU, like on the on the die. Um. So. I have the world's I, smallest transistors one nanometer long. That doesn't answer my question, Google. A nanometer is so fucking small. Yeah. Wait a second, my mind's getting blown here. So, you're in seven nanometers of space. That's the amount we're measuring between the fan and the and the what now? So it's called the the fan length, I think, or fan width. I'm not sure if it's the width or the length, but it's of the uh, it's the channel between the um, different polarities on the transistor. I think uh, there was a diagram that I thought we brought up I'm one time. At the diagram. Yeah. Um, so electrons passing through there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can only create it so small because I think 
I don't know anything about designing at the quantum level at all mm -hmm. transistors because I never did that. But I don't know. I heard that it breaks down. You know what? I just watched uh, Ant Ant Man and the Wasp. And oh yeah. I think we're gonna have to apply some quantum refabrication to get down lower than seven <laughs> nanometers. Honey, I shrunk the kids. And then if we if we spit a little quantum oil on it, we can get some real quantum uh, cycles going on those nanometers. You know what I'm saying? Mm, gotcha. If there's anything I learned from that movie, it's that if you say quantum in front of any word, you are a quantum physicist. <laughs> Give it a shot. Quantum chocolate. Okay, so... <laughs> I didn't think you would go there, and I did say any word, so I apologize. <laughs> Maybe I'll reduce it down. Let's qualify that. Quantum in front of any sciencey sounding word, and science okay. is an official word. You can look that up in Webster's Dictionary. Okay. Oh, pause for the cause for a second, and then we can get back onto the show, because I know we're supposed to be doing lightning round. Okay. What the fuck is going on in elementary schools in library day now? Like, I don't know. why would you go to the library ever? <laughs> if they can Google anything in the class with the computers in the class, who's going to the library? Like, I, I can honestly, if I don't know if kids are ever learning how to use a dictionary, would they need to know how to use a dictionary if they could just Google or go to a dictionary website. Sorry, this conversation there's, got weird fast. We were there's something to be said or... about about reading like a physical book, right? And sifting through a physical book, like 100. percent um, There are some books that don't have the ability to control F, right? So I'd rather just use a physical, like copy of like a code okay. reference book or something That's than true. using a digital copy that may not have like a control F feature and it was scanned in by photograph versus the the text working. Anyway. Control F for the use of to those of you that don't know is how you find words anywhere on any computer ever, except for if it's like a like a picture. Like somebody scanned in a picture, like Jesse just said. So you're welcome for that. You should tip Jesse some ether. Alright. Speaking <laughs> of tips this next article written by Adrian Zeminski uh, has 7,885 total. Adrian was trying to get that Christmas bonus. This boy is working. Anyways, white hat hackers earn 878 grand from crypto bug bounties in 2018. Uh, the data shows. Didn't, wait a second. White hat hackers earned 878,000, man. <sighs> Jesse, why we work so hard? Oh, wait. No, they are working hard. They're white hat hackers. Damn, dude, that's a lot of money. Anyways, white hat hackers have been awarded that much money. That's, the, I mean, there's no more, I don't, I don't know. So here's some stuff. <laughs> okay. Um, major cryptocurrency exchange Coinbase is reportedly the second largest bounty spender and spent $290,000 in 2018. Tron is the third largest paying 76200 this year oh my gosh tron is the crypto story that just keeps giving i don't understand it man <laughs> nearly four percent of all bounties awarded on the platform were for blockchain vulnerabilities so there we go um people are doing their home doing their uh was was the word I'm looking for? Paying it forward by white hat hacking and fixing these bugs, or maybe creating new bugs when they fix ones. <gasps> Open, Open the box there. Um, I think you yeah. skipped an article. I skipped one. <gasps> I Thanks. did. I did skip an article. For shame. Okay. Speaking of shame, oh, I had it open too. I just didn't. Didn't do. This was written by Jamie Redman. Uh, as 1,830 eyeballs five days ago. Um, sorry, that doesn't mean anything to you. Five days ago from January 3rd. Um, since Patreon began censoring members and participated in deplatforming, many of its users have been seeking alternatives. One option is the cryptocurrency infused Bitbacker.io. 
A Patreon-like application that strongly advocates freedom of speech and censorship-resistant money. So, Bitbacker.io, this is not sponsored. Interesting. Nope. Um, Bitbacker.io is a Patreon alternative that's powered by cryptocurrency, so that's kind of neat. Here's a little bit of reading. Over the past 12 months, censorships and deplatforming have become rampant. With abuse across major social media platforms, donation pages, and web forms. This has been particularly true of Patreon, a web portal that provides people with business tools and subscription service opportunities. Many well-known crypto luminaries. I love that word, luminaries, because it's like you're lighting up shit. (laughs) Developers, nonprofits, and YouTubers use Patreon to bolster their products and business models. So, yeah, man. Um... Yeah, um, it's a, yeah a this Patreon. is a huge thing because Jordan Peterson uh, ditched Patreon and so did a few other um, creators. That fill, fill me in. Who's Jordan Peterson? Um, Jordan Peterson is a, I think he's a psychology professor at uh, a, a university in, is it Toronto? Um, but he's Canadian and he was just, um, I guess there's been a lot of controversy surrounding um his position on fen- uh i guess feminism and the the alt left and how it's uh associating um itself oh, with is he the guy that goes to the campuses act- and he's like something something proved me wrong no that's not him oh, okay that's uh that's some fox news guy who got fired from fox news and uh created a podcast and he's a he's an antagonist super yeah, conservative yeah. guy he's kind of annoying yeah. but sometimes his arguments make sense but a lot of times they're just like pro- provocating provo- provocative yeah they're provocative yep yeah provocative for no reason like he's really uh, trying to provoke people who would really just like to get their chick-fil-a and go home so right anyways um we got off track there but long story short like jesse said i mean it's kind of a big deal people are like you know what Fuck you, Patreon. I'm going over to Bitbacker, and Bitbacker.io is like the crypto version of Patreon. So, um, well, it's a huge, it's a huge problem because they're having humans censor um, people, people's opinions, and that's mm-hmm. essentially what Jordan Peterson talks out against. He's talking about how we shouldn't let um, social politics influence uh, legal politics. I guess the way that we um, interpret law and identity. So mm-hmm. it's just interesting if you're into that stuff. It sounds like you're into it, Jesse. Yeah, a little bit. You big on freedom of speech? That's your thing? That's your jam? Not really, no. I'm big on interesting <laughs> things. <laughs> not, not big on freedom of speech, really. If people are getting persecuted based on what they say, I'd be okay with it. Absolutely <laughs> not, but... I'm fucking with you. Uh... <laughs> That'd be pretty. It'd be funny. Just I think I'd, you'd be perfect to have like in, like if I imagine like, eighteen hundreds Jesse that was around uh, when we, like they were making all of these important bills and laws, or like maybe seventeen hundreds Jesse. Yeah. And they were like, "Hey man, what do you think about this amendment?" And you're like, "Eh, I'm alright with it. It's cool." <laughs> like you got any, you got any words or? Nah, man, it's cool. Like, freedom of speech. I get it. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's keep That's it moving. exactly what I would do. <laughs> oh, God. The legislation would pass so easily, the world would end up in chaos. <laughs> in uh, a record setting year, Jesse passed every single thing that came across his desk. <laughs> God. <laughs> I get it. I get it. Yeah. Uh, anyways um all right on to monday then yeah let's go let's, move. let's keep it moving all right let's go let's go uh iran declares telegram crypto aspirations an act against national security what by aaron wood cointelegraph.com 10,501 total views 197 oh. total shares so the iranian government has taken steps against telegram's cryptocurrency development the te- Tehran Times reports December 31st, Secretary of the Criminal Content Definition Task Force Javad Javidnia 
has declared that any cooperation with the encrypted messaging app to launch its Gram token will be considered an act against national security and a disruption to the national economy, Javidmia stated. Quote, one of the most important factors in banning Telegram was a sense of serious economic threat from its activities, which was unfortunately marginalized and neglected due to the fuss in the political atmosphere of the country. That's uh, pretty interesting. Mm, damn. So. Mm-hmm. This is how I know cryptos get big time, though. Is we're starting to like make people, make powerful people angry, and countries are starting to get pissed off. They're like, wait, what? Damn it, I thought we already had control over that. They they did something else? Oh, God. Like, that's how I know crypto is starting to get kind of real for people. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Facebook's cryptocurrency, the Facebook coin or whatever they're going to call it, you know, you know, they have a lot of social, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Social real estate in India, and they're really targeting just the Indian market, right? So if you get all those people sending remittances back and forth with Facebook coin, like Western Union's gonna get fucking pissed. Western Facebook. Union's gonna be pissed off. They're gonna say like, "What the hell, Facebook?" I want that to be a thing. Facebook coin. Yeah, me too. Just so I can uh, send it to 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 people that I don't like. You know what I mean? Just like, oh man, I owe you some money. Let me big bag of Facebook coin. Are you lunch? Facebook coin. Here it comes. <laughs> Good luck. Good luck with that. Anyways, I, why, um, uh, I, I was going to say, I wonder why Twitch uses this thing called bits. Like, I wonder if it's to emulate like crypto, but I think it's it, not. It's not. It was like happening yeah. at the same time. It just happened. It's a weird uh, coincidence. Yeah. Okay. Every time All I right, hear the well, word Iran, I want to sing that song from the 80s. You know, uh, Iran. I ran far away. That's how I know I couldn't be in the intelligence community because they're like, okay, here's the Iran briefing. And then I just zone out for like three minutes singing that song in my head. <laughs> miss all the you miss, miss all the important bullet points. Oh my god. <laughs> Alright, all right, we're moving. We're moving, right? Like, Alright, so like, next like, next article. Next yeah. article. Next William article. Suberg of Coin Telegraph writes stellar coin co-founder brands 90 percent of crypto projects bs three Holy 33,733 shit. total views 325 total shares most financial institutions will not use bitcoin payment network stellar's co-founder and cto jed mccaleb stated in an interview with yahoo finance december 31st that's bullshit it- so this bullshit. Speaking to the online news outlet, McCaleb, who is also known as one of the founding fathers of defunct Japanese Bitcoin exchange Mt. Gox, as well as the co-founder of Ripple, made an argument in favor of use of permissionless open blockchains in finance. He told reporters bluntly, quote, it doesn't need to be the Bitcoin blockchain, but if it's not a public chain, then you're missing the point. All right, he's behind bullshit. Stellar and Ripple, so... I don't care. I don't Look, care. This is another one of Ripple's cohorts. Okay. Yeah. Um, he founded Ripple. He's co-founder. Yeah. Bullshit. Okay. So here's something that like I said in our general chat in the Slack the other day. Is uh-huh. that Shello- I don't know where was it? I hate having to scroll up in this fucking Slack because I'm like, where did I say what I said? What I said? Oh, Cello said um, tribalism is really killing crypto. And I said, tribalism is just greed in disguise. And he was like, what does that mean? And I was like, oh, well, Bitcoin is relatively successful, but its trek towards success is going to be really, really long now. And if it keeps heading the trajectory it's going, or if it did bottom out officially in this 3000 range and it's going to slowly go up again until it has a pop, goes the weasel moment, it's going to be a longer period of time. That's just what history has shown. Because it's a, um, it's moving uh, logarithmically, right? So mm. you know it's it you know it goes up sharply, but then it's starting to like grow slowly as it goes up and to the right. And so, um, but there's so much 
power packed into the tech that is Bitcoin, even though it's antiquated, according to, you know, the Ethereum camp, that people can peel off these different value propositions and make that instantaneous cash. Right. So like a bunch of people were in the Bitcoin community and then they saw, oh, there's a smart contracting thing and Bitcoin's not really leveraging smart contracting like it should be. It's in there, but it's tough. So we're just going to take it and streamline it and we're going to call this brand new thing. And then, you know, they get rich off of Ethereum. And then there's people that got rich off of the ERC-20. And people are just trying to peel away these layers to try and get rich. But, like, their wealth is generated in whatever they got rich with. And so they're just, that's just greed speaking. Their tribalism is just greed. Because they want their thing, the thing that got them wealth, to be the best. And... You know, I don't know if that ever ends, but I do know that it kind of breeds corruption. So, Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. That's, that's all I'm saying with that is that tribalism and, you know, it's, it's just greed. That's all. But anyways, that got somber. (laughs) Moving on to the next article for Monday. Oh wait, that's well, tribalism. Awesome. Tribalism can be like discrimination, right? As well, it doesn't have to be for like gain. It can be just to to artificially inflate a, a another group of people, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, either socially or whatever. Yeah, that is true. But I don't know. All right, next article. Excuse me. I would like to talk more about that just to harp on tribalism on it, but yeah, sure, why not? It sounds like a good topic, but it is a great topic. We should, we should keep this moving. You want to call into the Bitcoin podcast this weekend? Talk about it. Is that on Saturday or Friday? That's on Saturday. Yeah, sure. Cool. Let's talk we'll about talk tribalism. About All, All right. right. So last article for Monday mm-hmm. launch timeline for backed. Bitcoin futures to be clarified early 2019 ice Adrian Zmudzinski coin telegraph 14,701 total views 257 total shares Adrian. the Zmudzinski 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 <laughs> all right the intercontinental exchange announced that's ice uh, announced an update on the launch of the backed Bitcoin USD daily futures contract in an official notice December twenty uh, December thirty first. The document from ICE, the operator of the New York Stock Exchange and creator of the digital assets platform Backed, uh, that is B A K K T, states that quote following following consultation with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission (CFTC), ICE Futures US Inc. expects to provide an updated launch timeline in early twenty nineteen. For the trading, clearing, and warehousing of backed Bitcoin futures contract. Uh, the document reiterated that previously the firm had been targeting January 24th, 2019 as a launch date, but that, that the date will be uh, amended pursuant to the CFTC's process and timeline. Mm. The statement also outlines the particular nature of the backed futures contract, stating, quote, the backed Bitcoin daily futures contract is a physically settled daily future contract for Bitcoin held in backed warehouse and will be cleared by the ICE Clear US Inc. Each futures contract calls for delivery of one Bitcoin held in backed warehouse and will trade in US dollar terms. Interesting. Do you think uh, that the slogan for the intercontinental exchange known as ICE is stop, collaborate, and listen? Oh my God. What? All right, take it away. Tuesday. Go. <laughs> Just go. You didn't even want to entertain that at all. No, I didn't. You know, because I, I we could, we could keep going all right. on that. <laughs> all right. Stop. No I'm kidding. Uh, on to Tuesday's news. Speaking of really bad jokes, <laughs> Suberg. <laughs> That's such a bad segue. I'm sorry, Will. You're not a bad joke. You're not listening to this, probably, but if you were, I wanted to tell you that you're not a bad joke or an accident. While Bitcoin died 90 times in 2018, there's almost a thousand dead altcoins, data shows. Death. 
A look at the history of cryptocurrency in 2018 has shown that Bitcoin has risen from a dead designation in the media 90 times. Data from industry news and information portal, 99 Bitcoins, uh, but a shit coin ain't one shows. According to the site's fabled Bitcoin obituary section, which tracks media claims that Bitcoin has failed, almost 100 such claims service last year of BTC slash USD trended down from highs around 20K in December 2017 and lows of $3,130 in December 2018. Mm. Mm. By contrast, a log of all coins, which for various reasons disappeared from the market altogether, now contains almost 1,000 entries. So, I don't know. What makes a coin dead? Maybe, you know what? That'd be an interesting project for one of you guys out there if you're listening to this. Uh, go to 99 Bitcoins and like tell us what makes a coin dead. Or or, or, or if you guys could tweet uh, at uh, the BTC podcast um Maybe with a hashtag like dead coin and give us your opinion of what would make a coin dead. Because I don't think there's an official definition. If I had to poke at it, I think it was um, maybe there's no volume. There's no social media activity. There's no GitHub activity. There's nothing like it's just gone. And so I don't know. Give you guys opinions. We'd love to hear them. Um, And coming on to next article. You like that segue? Sure. Written by William Suberg. <laughs> there you go again. <laughs> Jesse, what very do you think agreeable. about Amendment 12? Sure. Let it rip. <laughs> sure. <laughs> state, state Senator reports to jail pending verdict and cryptocurrency fraud case. So this picture has Ronald Reagan looking at a token. I don't know what that means. A Georgia state senator has reported to jail over allegedly lying about the theft of cryptocurrency mining equipment worth 300 grand. The Guardian has reported this officially as of December 27th. Republican Michael Williams, who originally reported the alleged theft in May, made a false police report and gave a false statement, court documents claim. So, um... Some some, some fraud going on here. Let's wrap this with a quote. We're not really a... Uh, apprised of their evidence yet Uh, they haven't disclosed that I'm sure they will soon but at this point we don't know what it is they're saying other than that the indictment says and this is coming from the attorney AJ Richmond the attorney for Mr. Williams so um man there's a lot of bad actors in crypto man like that Ronnie Moaz guy that we interviewed and then these guys, oh, man. He's a Georgia senator. That's the man. state I'm in. <gasps> Dude, but you already know your state sucks. You already know your state sucks. <laughs> what? I mean, you've gone through it this year. What's the what best state? What's the best state? The best state yeah. right now? Um, What do we go know. by? Yeah. Population growth? Texas. I don't know. Just just enjoyment of, mm. of where you live. You're happy to live there. I'm telling you, as a Texan, Texas is great. If there's pockets of racism in there, you kind of avoid, you know, kind of like how you avoid black licorice. But other than that, you know, property's low, no income tax, uh, you know. There's no income tax in Texas? There's no in, There's no state income tax. There's no, You only pay the national income tax. You don't pay state income tax. So you keep that little oh. bit of money in your pocket. Gas price is like a buck forty-five a gallon. Are you serious? Yeah, man. Texas is a nice place to live. You could buy a gun. Like I woke up one day on Saturday, never wanting a gun in my life. I was playing Halo and was like, you know what? I think I want a rifle. And I went to the store and I bought a gun and I walked out by like eleven o'clock in the morning at uh, Academy Sports and Outdoors. I had a rifle. Uh, wow. What else about Texas? I feel like. Like when I started to hate on Texas, but the older I get, the more I'm appreciating. It's very large. So if you just don't like a city, there's Mm -hmm. four giant ones. There's Houston, San Antonio, Dallas. Uh, I think I'm missing one. Houston, San Antonio, Dallas, Austin. Mm -hmm. That's four giant cities. And then if you are like, if you are one of those people that is super, super conservative and, 
you know, maybe you sprinkle some racism in it. You can go out to Lubbock, which is a kind of bigger city out in the West Texas. So, mm. um, I'm kidding. Lubbock is not a city with racists in it. Maybe okay. now, maybe in the past, but not now. But on the trip uh, that I came back from, we were driving through um, Beverly Hills and Hollywood. Like I guess it maybe Hollywood Hills or Beverly Hills, one of the two. Mm-hmm. And um, there's some really nice houses there, like uh, yeah, mm-hmm. in the like double digit millions. <gasps> oh my goodness triple digit millions it's just like wow mm. that's a lot of money when you drove past beverly hills did you say to yourself that's where i want to be ha 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 you just no, hate I, it I, when i try to tie song lyrics into this show don't you that was because you know too many songs and you shouldn't you should you should not make song references to old songs. Should They're I dead. Make any, should They're I gone. Not know songs. I'm sorry that I know songs. I apologize, Jesse. No, I'm just kidding. All right. I don't know any of the new songs. If it makes you feel any better. Uh, I don't either. I don't think. I know Ariana Grande is killing the game though. Yo. Hmm. Go ahead, man. I'm sorry. I'm interrupting your swagger. No, no, no. I think you is got the last still. article. You got the one last article, right? No, no. This On is Tuesday. you. Oh, this, this is, is you Tuesday. Oh, yeah. damn. We didn't finish Tuesday? I'm sorry. I was like, lightning. I got Wednesday. Senator and crypto critic Elizabeth Warren enters 2020 U.S. presidential. Re- oh, great. Yeah. Juicy article. United States Senator and cryptocurrency critic Elizabeth Warren, who we all know, has announced her bid for president in 2020. The New York Times reported in December 31st. Following her announcement, Senator Warren made plans to visit the state of Iowa. Everybody's going to Iowa, which hosts the first presidential caucuses in the country in February 2020 caucuses warren is the senior u.s senator from massachusetts and has held office in the senate since 2013 the senator is known for her criticism of cryptocurrencies having repeatedly expressed concerns that cryptocurrency consumers could be hurt by scam initial coin offerings while also stating that crypto is easy to steal um you just don't know what the fuck you're doing senator sorry i should be more respectful madam warren uh, gentlewoman Warren, you um don't know what you're doing. Speaking at a Senate, it's not easy to steal. Speaking at a Senate Banking Committee hearing in October, Warren asserted that the challenge is how to nurture productive aspects of crypto with protecting consumers. The senator also outlined that American consumers are falling victim to cryptocurrency scammers. Senator Warren reiterated her critical stance in November, stating, "Oh shit, Jesse, it's a quote." it's it's american families that end up paying the price when any regulator says we're more interested in wall street what i think is that we need a federal reserve that is engaged in watching where risk builds up in the system that's the fed's job that's not the job of american families i don't like that (laughs) <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just, I'm sorry. I had to sprinkle my opinion in what she said there, and I just wanted to say I did not like that. Let's keep reading. Regulation. Hey, wait, wait. By the way, by the way, like this ties into um, basically what she's saying that it's not it's not the job of American families to basically understand how their money gets invested by Wall Street indirectly and then indirectly pay taxes when the government bails Wall Street out. But what I'm getting at is the fact that um, there was uh, the the reason why Patreon is actually um, using humans to manually censor people Mm -hmm. is because MasterCard told them (gasps) to do that, actually. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The plot thickens. Yeah, so it's Ooh, that's pretty a interesting. Plot. Anyway, continue. Sorry. No, man, you can't just drop a bomb on people and then like, eh, you know, MasterCard's doing funky shit. Move right along. No, I'm kidding. You can do that. It's your show. Um, <laughs> I do that all the time, B. You do. 
You do do that all the time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, like, crypto, it's weird, man, how crypto started with all these, like, initiatives to, like, do away with shit like that. But it's like, mm, we're just not going to get there because people just want to choose to be ignorant. And there's always going to be shit like that. And there's nothing we could do. You know what I mean? Like, nobody... People talked about decentralization, censorship resistance, but then when it came down to the opportunity for people to really buy in, they were like, "That, that's a lot. A private key? I don't want to remember that, or I don't want to store that correctly. That's just a lot. And it's like, really? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, it's back to square one. Anyways, let's keep reading here. Today, venture capital investor Fred Wilson wrote, in a blog post that he is especially concerned about the actions brought by misguided regulators who will take aim at high quality projects and harm them. So here's the bottom line. She's a fucking politician. So let's move to the next article. <laughs> Jesse, it's on you. All right. Wednesday. Yeah. First article of Wednesday hit BTC account freezes in spa light as trace Meyer, John McAfee claim foul play. <gasps> Written by William Suberg of Cointelegraph. Dude, there's so many juicy articles this week. Yeah, man. The juicy uh, coin uh, Cryptocurrency exchange hit BTC has yet to respond to accusations. It deliberately froze account withdrawals on January 1st, prior days prior to entrepreneur Trace Meyer's proof of keys event. In a hmm. series of tweets, Meyer, uh, well, Mayer, uh, joined names such as crypto act- advocate like John, John McAfee. Ah. Uh... <laughs> And voicing concern and even suspicion about heavy ETC after users reported being unable to withdraw their funds. On both Twitter and Reddit, users acknowledged that the practice of freezing accounts had occurred often in the past and that the timing two days before proof of keys was not necessarily deliberate. Proof of keys, which Mayor announced last month, calls on cryptocurrency investors to remove their coins from third party platforms in order to take control of their private keys. This, he argues, will educate them about holding reserves themselves and not relying on middlemen contributing to the spirit of Bitcoin and furthering adoption. Oh, yeah. We were just talking about that. Yeah. Do you ever use Be John responsible. Mayer? Do I ever listen to John Mayer? No, do you use John Mayer? Um, I don't understand the question. Yeah, you do. I'll say it one more time. Do you ever use John Mayer? <laughs> okay, I understand the question. Do you use John Mayer? Yeah. Do you... <laughs> Is a yes or no question. It, it is. <laughs> I I get it. <laughs> You've never used John Mayer, you know. Okay, let me give you. Let me use it in a sentence. No, D. I understand. I'm going to the next article. I'm trying to finish this so I can do the stream. It's ten twenty three. Bro, you got thirty seven <laughs> minutes still. What are you talking about? It's Eastern time. Oh, my bad. That's what I'm saying. My bad. All right. Sorry. Lightning. Lightning round. <laughs> Japan. E-commerce giant DMM shutters crypto mining business due to declining profitability. By Mary Huillet. Point Telegraph. 3,429 total views. 140 total shares. Japanese e-commerce conglomerate DMM.com Limited will shut down its crypto mining business, citing deteriorating profitability as the main cause. Local business magazine Toyo Kizai reported the shutdown on December 30th. All the right. decision was reportedly taken in September of 2018, and initial steps to dismantle mining operations include selling the company's mining hardware. <laughs> okay? Basically, it's going down. Yeah, it's there going we go. Down. DMM, DMM says they can't handle the heat, so they got out of the kitchen. Next article. Next article. Lightning. Last article, right? No. Yeah, last article no, for... Wednesday. No, last article for, for Wednesday. Oh, okay. Mike Mike Novogratz ups stake that. in Galaxy Digital to own almost 80% of shares. Mary Willett, oh, Coin Telegraph, 10,376 total views, 256, 252 total shares. Um, ex Goldman Sachs partner Mike Novogratz has increased his shares of Galaxy Digital, the crypto focused merchant bank he founded. Bloomberg reports on January 2nd. Mm. So previously he reported, quote, beneficially owning 213.7 million Class B limited partnership units, representing about 76.6% of ordinary shares, assuming conversion. And he bought 7.5 million new shares, 
which account for 2.7% of those issued and outset, outstanding at a cost of $7.42 million. Oh, million Canadian dollars or 4.8 million US dollars. So there you go. He bought more. He didn't buy more. Somebody backed out. Ooh, okay. Is that what happened? Uh, I mean, he could have bought more, but that means that somebody offered them to sell, right? So somebody was True. Like, somebody was like, dude, Nova Grats, back off. I don't want any more of this Galaxy Digital. It's not even <laughs> doing anything. I want out. And so he's, he bought their shares. So uh, he's probably going to try and only 80% of something and you've got to be pretty absolved with whatever that not absolved but absorbed with whatever that thing is so you know sure he's putting his money where his mouth is you know what I'm saying he is he's rooting what he's tooting if you get what if you're picking up what I'm putting down <laughs> all right I'm picking to, up what you're putting down <laughs> on a Thursday since uh, you know we got to get I'm going to do an announcement for your stream by the way Okay. The, end of the show. So I want you to type what you want me to talk because I'm going to do it in my voice, the, the voice that you like, the one that I'm about to do right now. This article, written by Anna Alexander. Irish government approves anti-money laundering bill affecting cryptocurrency. The cabinet, the executive organ of the government of Ireland, has approved a bill that would give effective to the... What the fuck? A bill that would give effect... <laughs> <laughs> I lost my... <laughs> that was good. That was funny. A bill that will give effect to the European Union, the fifth anti-money laundering directive, the Irish Times reported January 3rd. This directive, uh, with which came into force uh, July 19, 2018, sets a new legal framework for European financial watchdogs to regulate digital currencies in order to protect against money laundering and terrorism financing. So that's it. They're trying to make sure that like uh, baddies don't get a hold of crypto to do bad things. You know, I guess they're being cops. I don't know. Whatever. Fucking narcs. Okay, next article. <laughs> next article. Moving on. Um, Bitcoin turns 10 on anniversary of Genesis block. We all know this. Happy birthday, t- Bitcoin. 10 years since the Genesis block, baby. First 100 blocks, I think, pretty sure went to Satoshi. He was mining it by himself. Nobody wanted to mine with him. <laughs> it wasn't pre-mined. I want to clear that up. He offered it up to people. They said, fuck your Bitcoin, dude. That's weird. And he was like, cool. I'm just going to mine it by myself then. And then people started picking on to it. So, um, I think it's the first hundred blocks. I think it could have been more. It could have been like the first thousand blocks. Just, I, I really don't know. I had to check up on that. Last article of the week. 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 Written by Nikolai Kuznetsev. Kuz. What? Kuznets. <laughs> Nikolai Kuznetsov, Kuznetsov, Bitcoin versus traditional assets. How does cryptos? I don't like it when you laugh when I try to read names. It makes me, it gives me anxiety, Jesse. I'm sorry. I'll I'll mute my microphone. <laughs> you fucking liar! I know you're not. <laughs> Seven thousand three hundred sixty-eight total views, two hundred twenty-five shares. Uh, Bitcoin versus traditional assets. How does cryptos' ten-year performance sync up? Uh, Bitcoin has been among the most fascinating fascinating tradable assets to watch over the last year, from reaching dazzling new heights to its most recent tumble to fresh one-year lows. The cryptocurrency market has been nothing short of exciting when attempting to characterize its volatile ebb and flow. Amid the growing chorus of enthusiasts, activists, and investors calling for greater adoption, and more importantly, the launch of new financial instruments designed to give the budding new asset class greater exposure, Bitcoin prices have become a bellwether for the market. While still difficult to nail down an exact characterization of cryptocurrency and how it fits within the modern financial paradigm, whether a currency, digital asset, or commodity, by evaluating the price action in the context of its more established analogies, it becomes apparent that Bitcoin and its peers have reached significant milestones. Holy shit, man. By analyzing the characteristics of Bitcoin's assets in tandem with the commodities like gold, oil, or technology stocks that managed to survive the last tech bubble, it is easier to clarify Bitcoin's position within the context of past performance and how they may relate to the coin's outlook. Uh, is the run-up that really unprecedented? Or instead, is price performance more of a self-fulfilling prophecy that is bound to experience periods of accumulation, consolidation, and distribution akin to the to rotation? I can't do this. It's too fast. There's Lightning. too much text after Lightning. that. Um, 
Digital Gold, the fact that it has existed for 10 years despite drawing the ire of regulators experiencing several exchange hacks and devolving into scaling stalemate, Bitcoin is a modern marvel. Um, Many have compared it with gold and even have assigned Bitcoin the moniker Digital Gold in some ways. I love gold. Where gold and Bitcoin are similar lies in the properties of scarcity inputs uh, required to mine uh, the minting of new assets. So gold and Bitcoin prices uh, before the ETF. Uh, very similar gold seems more smooth than bitcoin was um gold price after the etf it skyrocketed uh can crypto sync with tech stocks no i'm gonna answer that for you guys no no i'm kidding i I really don't know but i'm i'm assuming that it's not gonna be really correlated with tech stock um let's see here this there's a lot going on this article i recommend you give it a read uh it kind of it uh compares the btc usd correlation to the oil prices which um doesn't look like much correlation at all um nevertheless um there's this week's news so um that's it the news as we present it to you there's lots more news probably that we missed uh, you can check it out there's a link in the show notes you go to the database all the news is there you click on the link you open the link you get to the article or you can join the slack the bitcoin podcast.com click on the little button that says slack if you can't read i don't know how you're listening to this podcast no okay. <laughs> you could speak a different language in that case I still don't know how you found this podcast. Okay, um, <laughs> click, the Slack, <laughs> click the Slack button. Join the Slack. You can hang out with Jesse. He'll love it. You say, hey, Jesse, you want to hang out? I say, sure. <laughs> say, sure. <laughs> That's what you okay. always say. Sure, man. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, d- did you type what you want me to read? Mm, no, I didn't do that yet. Okay, so I'm not really sure what I want you to read, but we'll do that later. Well, give me your URL for Twitch. Okay. Um, I'm going to... Should I change it now? I, I have the option to make it simpler. I mean, do what you feel in your heart, Jesse. <sighs> Here we go. Here we go. If you would like... If you want to catch Jesse's Jesse the Man Broke playing the shit at a battle right, poning noobs... Go to www.twitch.tv slash the Mexican Filipino. Why? Because he's Mexican and Filipino and good at video games. And he will play them for you to watch <laughs> on twitch.tv. Check it out now. Fucking go there <laughs> right now and watch him play the game. Yes. Uh, stop listening to this and go do that play the outro